Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. We're looking at different water projects from the Rotary Club of Ongata Rongai of Nairobi in Kenya. And we're looking at a very unique project that's associated with the Meru National Park and the protection of the local citizens from interaction with the elephants and the other large beasts within that area. This is a quite a unique project. And this is Rotarian Miriam Komu, who is the project's director for the Rotary Club of Ongata Rongai, Nairobi. And Miriam, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you, Sam. I'm glad to be here. And we're glad to be with you. Uh, you labeled uh, this theme as making a world of difference, sustainable water, sanitation, and nutrition. Uh, why that particular theme? Uh, in Kenya, one of the major problems is in water because most of the place in uh, the area in Kenya is dry land. And uh, we were looking at uh, areas that we can do a sustainable projects so that they can be running even way after we have already left the project. And this was named that because we found that water and nutrition go hand in hand and it is also one of the areas where the locals in the community needed sustainability in once you give water there's improved uh, nutrition in the community and also with improved nutrition and good health there's a lot of things that can happen in a community and that is why we thought about uh, water and uh, the sustainability of it and the nutrition bit of it mm -hmm. now looking at this project we see here kind of in the center of the map of Kenya, the Meru uh, National Park. Tell us about that particular park and why did you select that area of Kenya for your project? Uh, Meru National Park is uh, one of the large parks in Kenya and it is um, it is a very interesting uh, park because it has it's, it's a bit steep and with a lot of water and we thought it's the area is a green in itself in the, a lot of people think that it actually has water but the water flows you know to other areas and other um, rivers and ocean and we thought um it is a it, it is an area in kenya that a lot a little people think about because obviously if the area is green they should have water and uh one of the main reasons why we went there is because in rotary we have locals from there who told us, come see what is happening in, at Mary National Park. We have lots of water catchment areas, but the water is untapped. And if we tap the water, it, it, it has a flow of gravity. We don't have to use a lot of mechanism to take the water from the tanks up there into the uh, households of the people living uh, the, down the hills. And we thought it would be a very interesting uh, project to undertake because most of the flat areas, you need to probably dig the boreholes for the water to come out and uh, things like that. So when we did a project pre-visit, we found it an interesting, interesting um, project because we, we, we didn't, we wouldn't use a, a lot of mechanism to tap the water. It is all pure gravity. All we needed to do is pipe 
the water from uh, the catchment area up the hills uh, at the Nar Meru National Parks and put it uh, on, on, a, on a big tank and then using gravity also pipe to the households and easy peasy get water to their community <laughs> and we thought that it would be a good idea and affordable yes <laughs> Yeah, that's a thing. But, uh, you know, one of the uh, justifications for your project is that the animals were interacting with the humans that were trying to uh, gather the water from uh, the rivers and the streams just like this. So when you come upon a big tusker like this, and actually I did when I was in Kenya, uh, it was just about as close to me as this uh, image that you have here, Miriam. Uh, but Yes. What was the danger to the, the citizens around Meru National Park as far as actually going and gathering their water? Now, in the community, what used to happen is that um, the, the, the children and the, the ladies could go to fetch water in uh, some of the catchment areas uh, up the hill, and they would come into contact with such animals. And sometimes they would have to wait for the, a, a period of time for them to go through because they are dangerous animals, especially when you find um, uh, them nearby with the children and the women. And uh, we thought as to reduce the human animal conflict where they are going to fetch the water, we would now do the tank and pipe it downhill where the elephants do not go much and then get it out of the park and into the communities through the piped water so that the women and the children that go to fetch water don't have to go to the park in itself so that they don't even get into contact with the with the taskers and that was why uh, the main uh, aim of the project is to get them out of the national park itself because some of there could be deaths as they go to reach out to find water there could be injuries and stuff like that and sometimes it will even take longer to get the water as they wait for the animals to pass by because they usually have a path that they pass and that was one of the main reasons why we needed to get it out of the national park into the community so that they don't have to go and uh, face the animals in their park. yeah and this is a very beautiful area but it, it's uh, obviously it's a long flow uh, from the river uh, going into the community uh, when you have this much pipe uh, involved and it's running by gravity. But looking at this project, I mean, this is really a major backbreaking work that had to be done to lay this pipe uh, to get to the tanks within the community. So how did you organize the community to do this type of work? Um, as I said earlier, uh, some of the members of the Rotary Club of Wangata Rongai come from the area, so it was even easy to get to the community and speak the language and explain to them what uh, we wanted to do. And also, luckily, we used the um, human resource in the in the in we have in, that uh, helped us work out the um, the whole design of the project and uh, using the community even to get involved in uh, working on the project gave them so they felt like we are doing this for us as much as we are, we are also economically empowering them in the work they felt they, they took the ownership of the project for from the beginning to the end we had a few hiccups where once they they dug the, the 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 trenches for the pipes the elephants could come and actually dig them out and they also needed to do a few adjustments so that they could go deeper or places where it wasn't within the path of the uh, of the elephants and uh, all this the community owned they also for the project they took time to even understand uh, how it would work with the elephants around because they also couldn't work with them roving around the area and the community took ownership of the project at heart and that is why i think it was a very good successful project uh, for us to do with them yeah when you look at the uh, you know digging this of course this was a lot of backbreaking work and very difficult uh, to do that but uh, most of this actually was hand labor uh, that was done on site. So the design you said was actually from within the Rotary Club itself? It was within the Rotary Club. One of the Rotary engineers did that. And I understand there's a number of uh, engineers uh, within your organization. So uh, 
you know, this is really uh, tedious, uh, but also uh, it's very precise work that they're doing. And it's amazing the energy that the community was willing to uh, commit to this. Tell us about uh, the citizens becoming involved with the Rotary Club and why you think that citizen Rotary Club members was so important. Um, I think they were important because they actually brought out the, the real need in the society because they come from the neighboring communities and they have interacted with the people and probably even heard from the community around how difficult it was and some of them actually came across um, the ladies and the, and the children going to school and some of them are even school uh, board members where even the teachers explain the dropout or the missing of uh, children going to school because they were out there going to fetch water and they didn't come back in time for school so involving uh, them and the community mm -hmm. also gave us a good um, a better understanding of the project and the need and how well we could uh, handle this um, need so that uh, the community could not uh, spend a lot of time going to fetch water so that the community could also benefit in other areas like kitchen gardens and um, in the nutritional improvement of the community. So the community, um, th there's a committee from the area that is actually uh, attached to the project where they have a chairman and they have a treasurer and a secretary who sits with the other community members and discuss some of these issues and then they report to us through the engineer who comes from the same area and you know we have very different dialects and sometimes we cannot understand each other but because we were we had an engineer who came from that section of the of the country they were able to talk even in their own uh, tongues mother tongue and also come to explain to us the need there which worked to our benefit yeah i tell you this is uh, actually very nice work when you look at this up close and personal there was uh, a great amount of pride that went into this but also good expertise that came uh, out of the community itself and then also you had training uh, for uh, the youth within the community. So not only were they going to benefit from the water, but also they benefited from education, correct? That's correct. We, we undertook some training on um, how best they could utilize the water from the tank to be able also to economically empower themselves, like um, grow plants that they can sell and get little money from their for, for the for their families, and also also in the management of the project itself. For example, if they have to do some maintenance, they don't need to call us from uh, uh, 300 kilometers away to come and uh, try and uh, do the maintenance for them. So there was that the, we had some several kinds of training for also them to understand how the project works and how it can also benefit them in their livelihood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell you, this is uh, this really turned out to be a, a very large and, and important uh, project, uh, but also you could see the pride and uh, the commitment from the local communities in order to be involved uh, in all of this. And uh, when you see this number of people turning out for an event, you know that it's critically important to them. And we're gonna end on this, uh, Miriam, we're running out of time. What do you see for the growth and expansion of your Rotary Club and other water projects over the next five, 10 or 15 years? Uh, the club is- uh, We gotta be quick, we only have about really a few going... seconds. Yeah, going big on the water project and we plan on doing the same in other areas that are probably we can use gravity, which is less expensive and also dig as many boreholes around that can sustain a, a community, a big number of community members so that we can also give good nutrition to them through the vegetables that they also grow from the community. And we are also planning that to do almost in every county, a boohole somewhere, even in churches and in schools, so that they can also educate the children on the importance of wash, the hand sanitation and all that. That's fantastic. Miriam Kobu uh, from the Rotary Club of Ongata Rongai, Nairobi. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet.